Hello everyone, and welcome back to our Beastman campaign for Mortal Empires. Now before I start today's episode off, I apologise for it being a day late. Basically yesterday I just had a really shitty day at work and I just did not feel in the mood to do any recording. So what I'm going to do today instead is release this episode and the final episode of my Yasugi campaign for Shogun 2 soon afterwards. So you guys will still get the content, just happen to be a day late with this one. Now, with regards to the campaign, as you remember, we have managed to complete the ritual in Grenstadt. And originally, I was talking about taking Malagos, Zeratori, and a new legendary lord over towards Sylvania and start marching our way up then towards, uh, Ta not Talabekland, what's this one called? God. Game? Austinmark. Thank you. Game for confirming that and moving our way up here. But I was thinking recently that the Wood Elves have been a bit of a pain in the backside, and we still want to finish off the Dwarves before we go after the Empire proper. So, I'm going to bring my armies together, and we're going to go after the Wood Elves, and we're going to go after the Dwarves of Clan Duasclad. Finish them both off, and then we can focus all of our attention on the Empire. So, what I'm going to do with the two armies over here, is instead of marching towards Templehof, I'm going to start bringing them up to unite with the other armies. So if we grab you first of all, I'll see if we can get you to go after this army here. And looks like we've got some rebels here as well we could potentially go after. You know what? While we're here, sure. Let's move you a little closer, Malagast. And then if we grab the Hattori, we'll have you then come over and attack. Malagas the Doomslayer, eh? This is just to give us some extra dread and experience, so nice easy victory. There we go. And we will get some Bestial Rage. Okay, Kaznor the Gorse Bringer. And we should still have enough movement in to go after these guys. Don't really need both of them, but I might as well while they're here, eh? There we go. Decisive victory. Nice and easy. Done. Okay. So, Hag Tree Fetish, Sword of Swift Slaying. Excellent. Now, over towards here. Now that we've actually taken all the territories, in fact, did we finish... What do we need to do left here in Solent? We need to go after Fort Sol, Karakhan, we could go after Steingart. I presume there's Skaven in the ruins. Do we need to... No, we don't need to go after Festus Spike. We can do that later on. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, let's move Gore down towards here. What I'm hoping to do is to draw Grim Burlickson here into an ambush because he may not think, oh, Fjordorf is unoccupied now. We'll be able to march in and destroy the place. But if we can... Excuse me, I didn't mean for you to do quite that. I thought I had Moloch selected. Thank you. Right. Come on, Moloch. Let's move you down to here. In fact, if we stick you here, you might be able to set up an ambush and act as a reinforcement as well. And then Goros will go and do the same right about here. That way then we've blocked off this entranceway. And then once we're done with the army, if it starts moving, we'll be able to go after all these other places, like up here at Karakurn. Right. Anything else I needed to do? Oh yeah, there was one more thing, but I'm going to wait until the next turn so we can get a bit more dread. So, let's just quickly go for our skill points. So, Hattori... Let's finish off the feeble info. You need to get that to finish off your magic. Snenzo, let's give you the call to more sleep. Malagos to Doomslayer. And uh, let's continue Fear of the Herd. There we are. Jindari, a natural first. Kaznor. I think at this point, yeah, you've now done all of your spells, haven't you? Yeah, we're just going to have to start working on other things like spread corruption with you instead. And, end turn. Now while the end turn phase is going through, it gives me an opportunity to ask your guys for what you think about the new trailer with the Ogre Kingdoms. Now, I'm quite happy to see that they've finally given us a release date, which was the 17th of February next year. And as I've already pre-recorded my... sorry, pre-recorded? God. Ugh. Can't talk today. Pre-ordered 
My copy of Warhammer 3, I'm looking forward to checking out the Ogre Kingdoms when we get them as well. I think they're going to be a fairly unique faction with everything they've got, like monstrous infantry as standard and things like that. And I did notice that they had a pop-up talking about the mechanics for the Ogre Kingdoms is now available to look at. So I'm going to have to do that after I finish recording this episode. But I think it will be quite cool and I'm really looking forward to when they do... Oh, hello. <laughs> ah, you poor fool. There we go. So we've only got the two armies coming in, but a decisive victory for us, nonetheless. All right. Let's... We don't really need more Bestial Rage. We'll just devour the captives instead. There we go. But yeah, I'm really looking forward, to, though, to having the Mortal Empires with all three games combined. And especially as what they've been doing with Warhammer 2 is they've been going back to revisit the Warhammer factions and giving them new mechanics, new models and units and things like that. And I think that will be really good for Warhammer 3, given all the different things they're incorporating into that. I think it would be really good if they go back to revisit some of the other factions and start even doing a bit more with them. Uh, especially for like Warhammer 2 with the Skaven and the original factions all having those same mechanics since the very start of the game. So having a few extra varieties or even seeing little things happen like what was it I remember coming across? Ooh, Dread King uh, legions have been destroyed. Interesting. So the Black uh, Pyramid of Nagash has fallen to another faction. Fair enough. But no, there was a spell, I think, with the with the Beastmen, which made it so, if you read the description, they had it so you actually says, right, it damages units, and be, because of the horses, the mounts, are turning on their riders, and yet they don't have that sort of mechanic in the game. So just having those little changes to the spell mechanics would be really cool. And just having the whole world at your disposal... So if you wanted to play as the, you know, High Elves and want to go going after the Ogre Kingdoms, you can. If you are the Dwarves and you want to start hiring, you know, more Ogre Kingdoms to help you go and take on uh, the Wood Elves, you can. There's just so much potential out there, and especially with the extra DLC that will be coming out, no doubt, with the game. So you're going to have things like the Hobgoblins. Now, they already feature to a small extent in things like the Chaos Dwarves, which will no doubt be a faction in the game, because we're going to be exploring that part of the world where they are, right over here on the minimap, right where the cursor is. But the Hobgoblins have a well a faction which is really, really big. It's, they're very similar to the Mongols, and I think that could be interesting to have an army just composing of all these wolf riders and stuff like that. There's just so much potential they can do with the game when it comes out and start adding DLC and combining them into Mortal Empires like for, like we do right now. That would just be really, really good. Anyway, enough of me talking. Let's continue with the turn with Gaze of Darkness. Our devotion to madness and destruction has drawn the favor of the Chaos Gods, who wish to reward our calamitous actions with a gift, yet we could reject it. Shall we do so, or shall we accept this ruinous offering? So we can accept it for 2,000 favor, which really is not a big deal for us. Or we can reject it, which will give us plus 5 Horde Growth. I'm actually going to go for the Horde Growth. Now, we don't need it for our armies that we've already got. But I did say about wanting to get another army. And I did ask you guys which Legendary Lord we should pick. Now... Due to a lack of feedback from you guys, and I must say I'm really disappointed with that. <laughs> only messing, only messing. But since I want to go after the Wood Elves, I thought there is a very good choice for us to have as a Legendary Lord. So if we pop onto here and here, I want to go for Morgul, the Shadow Gave. This character is basically the epitome of corruption and is almost like a rival, an antithesis of Ariel as a the mission the goddess of life he and beauty he is one of corruption they've even got a proper name for him in the wood elf tongue i can't remember off the top of my head it begins with c but this character does not die even every time that the elves have killed him he has come back eventually as like he's been reborn into the world so going after the wood elves i think he would be a really good choice 
so we're going to go and give him into our army. And what I'm going to go as well is we're going to go make sure we get a unit of Bray Shamans. Damn, I need a bit more points before we can go for one of these. I'll have a think which one we're going to go with. But we've done that. Let's just quickly sort you out. So while we're moving, let's grab Morgul the Shadow Gave. Shadow Gave ability, as you can see here. A bunch of extra bonuses, and he's also immune to Athel Lauren and the Awakened Forest Attrition. Cool. So, let's recruit you. And we're going to go ahead as well with uh, Shadow Tongue. Slu sorry, Slug Tongue. Recruit a Bray Shaman and have a look to see which one will be quite useful for us. Tough. Enemy leadership, maybe. Intelligence, determined. Booze cravings, disciplines, or. Perceptive, confidence. I'm going to go for confidence just because of those bonuses to all the units in the army. So we'll have you, and then we'll have them join up eventually too. We can't do much more with Morgul at the moment, although you're only level 1. Oh wow, we have a lot of potential then with this character to upgrade him. And we're definitely going to have to go for the Blessings of Zeech, aren't we, with this character. You know, corrupt corruption, mutation... I think there's no better Chaos God than him to go with. But, let's go and kill us some Dwarves. So now that we defeated that army in the ambush, Fort Sol will be open to our attack. What I think we could do though, actually... Yeah! Okay, so Goros... Goros, I'm gonna have you do the initial attack on Fort Sol. I'll see how you do in this attack, or do we have to bring in more reinforcements? Close victory. We won't lose any four units. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I'm not a big fan of fighting the four battles as the attacker just because I think they're quite... I wish they had the most same mechanics for uh, whatchamacallit for sieges. So you can actually build siege equipment and now to attack the forts rather than what we have to do right now. But we'll take that nonetheless. Superior attacker for you. Beard collector. A spoiler. Okay, let's have you rest up. And then I think... You can now join up with him, finally. There we are. So, Gore. You need a bit more experience than Thingy Bob does. So if I grab Slugtail. And I'm going to bring you up to act as a reinforcement for the army here. So if we can get you to about here. We'll bring the rest in then to actually attack Karakurn. And see if we can make this work for us. Yeah, we can't move you any further. So, let's grab Gore. And if we have you actually attack Ungrim, he looks like he's the closest commander, so this will draw all the armies in. But then we should not only be able to beat them, but be able to march in and take Karakurn afterwards. Ooh. It's going to be a close victory. If we don't fight it ourselves, we will lose some units. I'm actually going to fight this battle. We'll have a nice big one, I think. So we're going to be starting with Ungrim and these other units nearby, including the Rangers. But then we'll be able to go after the Miners and the Garrisons and that fairly easily. So, sure. Let's fight the battle. I'll see you guys down there. So here we are guys on the battlefield as the enemy reinforcements and our own reinforcements come in all around the map. Now given the enemy originally deployed their forces just here, I wasn't sure where who was going to be coming in from what direction. And when I spied that there was a force coming in from this side, I decided to take the opportunity to come and ambush this army before we have to deal with the larger one here. By the time they get into position and start slowly marching their way towards my lines, we should hopefully finish off the situation here and then be able to turn around and deal with these guys. Now as their reinforcements are coming onto the battlefield, my own is coming over here as well with Slug Tongue and his retinue making their way onto the battlefield. Now already we've got Fedantha Soulwender and Galak Stoneheart rushing ahead of the army to engage in combat. And the others have basically just been given orders to run up into a position roughly around here. So we can then move them around where we need to once battle gets a bit further on. Now this unit of harpies, I thought I'll take the opportunity to actually try and chase down the gyro bomber here. Because I didn't want them dropping bombs on my troops. And according to the bar when you click on it, it was going to be an easy target for us. But as my Harpies were taking their sweet time getting into position, you can see first of all them getting pelted by the Gyro Bomber. 
And then as we got closer to the enemy's line, the rangers that were scattered around the place were going to start firing at them too. Especially as we got closer and closer into range. So yeah, not the best tactic to have done and we nearly lost the harpies. But I thought it was worth doing so at the time anyway. But if we turn around here and we can slow things down a little bit for the charging glory. You can see that Gore has charged right into the unit of Dragonback Slayers here, just going to town on them from his chariot up there. We've also got the Bru Blood Brute Behemoth going after Grom Brindle. According to the bar, he was going to be an easy target, so I figured it would be a good choice for us to send him flying. When the game catches up, that is. Whee! <laughs> While that's happening, we've got the Morphan Cavalry charging in, we've got it back here, Desarius charging in. Gorklaw is up on the top, going to be boosting up with spells whenever we get the opportunity to do so. And everybody else is just running in order to engage the enemy. We do have a bit of a trouble back here. You can see that the miners have spawned, but the ogres are just ignoring them at this point. They spark better prey in the distance. So these guys are just going to be running around until we eventually get around to dealing with them. I think I end up sending one of these guys to actually go and finish them off, but there's no rush for us to deal with them right now. In the meantime though, you can see uh, here comes Goreclaw. I accidentally sent him into attack instead of casting a spell like I wanted. So he gets a bit of damage in, but he's going to be okay. Everybody else is just having a way over time. You can see the Morphan Cavalry just going to town on the enemy uh, warriors. They do take a bit of damage as you can see, but I haven't been entirely sure what from. But one of those things. And you can see here a Manticore has been spawned using the transformation of Kadan. Now, we still need to do a couple more summons onto the battlefield in order to unlock one of our researchers. So, I'm happy to try and do that as often as we can now in combat. But, with our Slagors now, in fact, I don't think we've introduced Slagors properly. You can see them here. Right? With glistening blades and those darkened skin as they're charging right into the enemy. You can see some of them armed with whips some, and things like that. Very familiar weapon for followers of Slanesh. Especially if you give them like a whip of agony or something like that as a magical item. But yeah, as you can see, we've pretty much wiped out all of this side of the battlefield. All we got left to deal with really is Grand Brindle, and the Blood Brute Behemoth is having, well, a bit of bad luck actually fighting him. It's because of all the buffs and that he can provide to himself. So as my Beast Lord Gore is actually dealing with the last of the Slayers, I'm going to start bringing him in then to actually come and help out the attack. You can see some Minotaurs have joined in the initial attack and they were again brought in then to fight them. But I figured given that he is quite good for anti-large and things, I just didn't want him to really uh, kill off my Minotaurs. But with that clear side now clear, I'm moving Moloch's army in to get into a battle line ready for us to receive the enemy's attack. But they are taking so long to get into position. It's unbelievable. Even my Pestigors, which are not the fastest units in the world, as you can see, movement into 9. 39 are still faster than these guys. So we're getting in position ready to engage. And what I was basically planning to do is engage all their units and then flank them then with my first army here. And we can already see some of the initial engagements happening right now. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see you've got Slangors going in to deal with the Longbeards. Then we've got other units getting chased down. The Miners are not lasting too long against my Slagors and Gores. But we've been able to sweep through, deal with the Thunderers pretty quickly. And it's allowing us ninjas to outflank the enemy very easily with our Morphan Cavalry and other units. In the distance, you can see a Pit of Shades being unleashed. Now something I read about on Reddit, and I checked it out in the battle and found it actually works, is how Vortex spells work. So for those of you that haven't had a go with it yourself, what you can do is you can direct the, the initial direction of a Vortex spell. The same way as you do for like a wave spell or what have you, by basically click and drag in, so it goes where it normally tells you what direction you want it. You can do the same with a Pit of Shades. So I was able to get it to initially come through here and carve through this unit of miners. And I was hoping it was going to swing around, but obviously it didn't do that. But something for you guys to know in the future, it's quite a useful thing to be able to do. Just to send it off so it has an initial direction to go to. But anyway, we could come straight over here a little bit more. You can see that the Longbeards are just having a rough time against my Slagors. And I am being fairly slow bringing in my other units. If you look over here, when the game catches up, 
I pulled out my Blood Reaper Behemoth to join in the mid combat, and we got Grombrindle going up against Gore right now from it on his chariot. Now it looks like really the Razor Gores are having the blunt of the combat, but we are slowly whittling him down nevertheless, and in a second you'll see him being wounded. There we go. Done. So now that he's freed up, I'm going to bring him to join in with the combat. The problem we're going to have fighting this battle eventually is, well, not so much dealing with the rest of the enemy infantry, where we're already just carving through them. The harpies are having a bit of fun, a bit of a explosive miscast right here, but we're just boosting up our combat potential. Pants and Pendulum Belt giving us extra melee defense and physical resistance. Longbeards and everyone just fighting away, but they are not going to be able to do well against our gores. We outnumber them massively at this point. And enough that we've got rangers running away. Over on this flank we've cleared things up completely. I've got, uh, I can't remember the spell, it's the Lord of the Black Harvest ability I think it's called from Slug Tongue, who's just uh, does a massive amount of damage to the rangers. And over here the last remaining rangers unit, this is trying to hang on up there against my two gores. I actually forgot to move them around so I end up bringing my beast of gores in just to try and finish them off. Nice and easy though. But at this point We've basically won the fight. You can see if we hover over here now, the enemy is outnumbered over 4 to 1 by our forces. And while they're still hanging on in there, they're not going to be able to hang on for much longer. In fact, you can see now the chain route is starting to happen. And there we go, one unit's gone. Everybody now is retreating. The only person who isn't, of course, is Ungrim Iron Fist. He's uh, here, I've got Verdant charging in because I, according to the bar, he was actually going to be able to do okay against Ungrim. But I think when he starts boosting himself up, he is really, really tough. As benefits, I guess, the Slayer King. So you can see Dwarves trying to run past him, but they're getting chased down by my Beastagors and the Ogres. In fact, just to show off quickly, because I haven't really seen them until this battle, at least I remember. These are the Man-Eaters, armed with massive hammer great weapons. I still want to check out the ones with pistols at some point, but I just thought it was really cool to see them in the battle again. Now, it's going to take a long time for us to deal with Ungrim. As you can see on the toolbar, I'm basically boosted, well, trying to re reduce his combat abilities with spells every chance I get, but he's still able to boost himself up massively. And as a result, it's taken a long, long time. What I ended up doing was pulling all my troops out, especially after Fedant was getting injured, and just smothered him in Pestigors. I pulled them out originally because I figured it would be useful for me to try and just get the showdown going on between my characters, but yeah, Fedant is just not doing too well. So what I ended up doing, like I said, just swarming him. And so this actually makes the battle last a bit longer, as you'll see in just a moment. I pull him out. And there's the, well, click to order all the Pestigors in. <laughs> He's just going to get swamped right now. He still does a fair bit of damage against them, but the reason why I want the Pestigors to go in is because they have regeneration. And bears of decay to reduce the enemy's potential in combat. So I just figured between all of this, this will keep him alive long enough and not allow him to cause that much damage. You can see there, I've got Soul Blight going on, Spirit Leech to try and reduce his combat abilities and do some damage respectively. We will continue to use the Evolve and other ones as well. And everybody else is just hanging around, waiting for the inevitable fall. But I can safely say, guys, we defeat him in combat, so I shall see you guys back on the campaign map instead. So there we have it, a decisive victory. Now I think we could have took a little less casualties, I mean, I have to give credit to Gore, who managed to get 81 kills, including uh, Grombrindle himself, but I could have used my troops a little more effectively in the combat, but we won, so I'm not going to complain too much. So, what do we want to do with our captives? I think we'll eat them, might as well get a bit of a replenishment back. And because we took out pretty much everybody there, we should be able to just march straight into Karakurn and take them out. We may have to chase down these two survivors here, it seems, but I think we'll be okay. So Gore now has picked up magic resistance and missile resistance plus 10% and plus 5 melee attack. Excellent. Even better, his entire army has physical magical resistance now. The Chalice of Dark Rain, what does that do? 
Reduced accuracy for affected combatants and minus 30 accuracy for troops within 200 meters of the ability. Sorry, within 40 meters of the ability, but it has a 200 meter range. Ooh, we might have to give that to somebody. What do we have at the moment, Core? As the Iron Curse icon, I think we can swap that out for you. Uh, assuming we can give it to you, apparently we can't. Is it in here, maybe? Ah, there it is. Dragonbane gem for 5 resistance, or that. We'll go for that. Well, there we go. Ken and Gore, you may have the honours of taking Kamek Kern. Uh, assuming you can move. Uh, game. There we go. Alright, decisive victory. We'll take it. Nice and easy. Loot and ways. And there we go. Done. The beast banner for him now. 10% missile strength and weapon strength. Uh, it's not the most best of banners, but I suppose can't complain. You can't attack. You might be able to. Perfect. Crack the Grim. Goodbye. There we go. It's another unit destroyed, another army done. Gore, I think, has done extremely well for himself today. So, we'll move him back down eventually. Slug Tongue, do we need to move you down this way? No, I mean, we could go after the Border Princes, but they're not really a target for us. What I think we'll do is start moving towards Karakizor, because if we can build a Herdstone here, this will allow me to take Fester Spike, the Crag Halls of Findor, King's Glade, as well as Karak Bufda, which I believe will be the last remaining settlement of theirs. But we we'll have to be careful in case any Wood Elves come out of Athol Lauren. I mean, I don't tend to do much but stand around and wait for somebody to attack him. So let's move you over there. Gloss. I suppose we can start moving you down, couldn't we? Now you could do a bit more replenishment. I'll let you rest up. Then more gave. Because we just recruited you, you can't move any further yet. Jesus, it's just thanks to the battle before I'm kind of losing track about how far we've actually or how much we've actually done this turn. But we can move you guys down there, sure. And field off, let's continue upgrading these. And is there anywhere else I need to upgrade in? I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Alright, in that case, we'll just assign points quickly. So, Gore. Let's give you Deadly Onslaught and the two level... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Immortality, Deadly Onslaught. And an actual first. There we go. Alright, Gore Claw. I think now you've got all of these, so I'm just going to continue giving you Scouting and Spread Corruption. Desarius, three points. Let's finish off a natural first, Deadly Onslaught, and then go for Woundmaker. Senenzel can now get Immortality, well deserved. Goros, let's continue working on your combat skills with Hatred of Man. And Rack Wound I suppose at this point we'll go for Traitor Kin, start working on that spell. I th actually, Traitor Kin. Yeah, this is the one I was talking about earlier. A red hot spear of wrath is driven into enemy mounts, wild hearts, causing them to turn upon their attackers. So I would have liked the effect to have something like it would have been more deadly against cavalry units, or that it can only be used against cavalry units, but it does a fair bit of damage to represent that, because it doesn't make sense having that against infantry, but against monstrous cavalry, against characters riding their creatures, and things like that. That could have been really useful as a unique spell for that, but no matter on those things. So we'll grab that, we'll grab Vile Tide, Prey, Scream, and this one. And we'll go ahead for Invasion 2, that's you all done up. Let's quickly give you some items as well. So I won't worry about the Crown of Command. But I will give you... Let's give you a Trickster Shard. I'll give you Opal Amulet. And any of these that will give us extra magic. So that one, that one... We'll let you have that one. And Chaos Corruption. Should do quite nicely. And then if we go on Morgul, let's see what we can give you. I'll give you the Beast Banner. The Banner of Swiftness. Doe. Cheaper Horde Buildings. Definite. Poison Attacks you already got, so we don't need to do that. 
but I will give it increased capacity for Chaos Spawn. And then, extra 12% chance of stealing magical items. I will, shall give you that too. The Gambler's Armor, why not? That too, and this one as well. And then eventually we'll be able to start working on all of these. So something that happened in the end turn phase, which has made me a little concerned, is up here, where we can see there's two Wood Elf armies nearby. We've got Philvacus and we've got Luen. Now I haven't spotted any others moving, but we are going to have to spot, if we are going to go after the Wood Elves, of course, we are going to have to bring some troops back up here to go after Karakaziflin, and Helmgard and Montfort, and then we can push down then towards the Waterfall Palace. So rather than send all my forces the way I was going to, they will send them up there instead. Builders, okay. And as you noticed, one of my, my new shaman has actually been wounded by a dwarf agent here. So, unfortunate, but one of those things. Anyway, Zatori, let's start moving you up towards Non, I think. Can we use the beast paths to get there a little faster? Maybe. Let's bring you right to here. And I'll send Malagost as well. So, yeah, Beast Paths, jump you over towards here. And then we can be able to go after those later. Goros and Co. can start marching their way down towards Karagizor. So if we take our time a little bit, just in case the enemy is around. So let's let Goros move through. Ah. Right. So already we've got a Wood Elf army nearby in Karagizor. Okay, now we could potentially attack them right away, but I don't know if it'll be necessarily worth it. Let's see if we can bring in any reinforcements. So Gore is unable to, we're going to have to use the Beast Pass. We could actually jump down and potentially use it. So yeah, we'll bring you there. Moloch, let's get you jumping down too. Like that. Over here in Fjordorf. Now we could go after Steingart, but since I'm not particularly at war with any of the Skaven, I'm quite happy just to go ahead and perform the final ritual. So it's given us 34 points of ruination, and we're not too far away now. Yeah, just another 36 away from completing the entire levels. Looking forward then to getting that, because then we'll be able to get not only get the final battle, but the particular thing I'm interested in getting for the Wood Elves is the immune to attrici immunity to attrition even. Because uh, being able to march into the forests of Athol Lauren and not have to worry about taking any damage is just too good an opportunity to pass up. So hopefully we'll be able to get it pretty soon. Like I said, we'll have Karagizor burn down become a new Herdstone location. We'll go after Fest Spike for an extra point and Karak Bufta. Not too concerned about any of the ones down here, and then we can march all our armies then into Athalolan. For you, Morgul, I'm going to move you up so you can continue joining the armies here, but we are going to take our time a bit, just so we can get the extra units we need to start recruiting. While he's moving, let's quickly level this up too. Got more than enough favour, so why not? In fact, since we do have a lot of favour, let me have a quick look with the Scourge and Misilan. Where are you guys? Now we can't do much in terms of diplomacy, but given their strength, I'm just wondering... Damn. I was hoping that we could have the option to ask them to declare war on the Wood Elves just to help us out, because we had more than enough favour we could have been able to bribe them, but apparently not. But that's okay, it's one of those things. Now I wanted to pop on here quickly so we can go and recruit some more. What do I want? Gorbals or Wargors? Let's go for another Gorbal for Morgul's army. We'll increase... what else do we need? Let's get some more Beastagors. And then we'll see about maybe going for a Jabba Slife for his army, maybe a Gorgon, something like that. In the meantime, let's start leveling you up. So you need that, we will give you this. What's this one? Mutated Grove? Wait, have we missed this? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh wow! So the legendary lords have their own unique 
building. Right, mutated growth. Okay. Wait, does that mean Slugtongue has one? On account of him, Rally is a custom lord. He's still a legendary lord. Um, I don't know, actually, because we can't build anything right now. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. I was just curious. Okay, let's do research. How many more turns do we have of this? We still need to summon two more units. Okay, so we've still got a little way to go. And we've still got Horns of War to try and do at some point. Alright, let's go for Roman Torment in order to get the reduction time for the Saigors. Shindari, we will now go for... Oh, wow, you've actually got everything, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, let's just go for Spread Corruption instead. The more corruption we can spread, the more damage we'll do to enemies through attrition. Right. That should be everything. Ooh. Okay. So, we've got a battle here at Orddorf, where Filvarkus and his army have come to attack us. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm not looking forward to fighting this, because I hate fighting Zoats. Because of their magical abilities, they can cast spells and heal themselves up and stuff like that. But... I want to bleed them out. So what I'm going to do is end the episode here. And next episode, we'll start things off with this battle. And who knows? We might win. We'll just see how it goes. But for now, though, guys, thank you for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And you do join me next time, of course, for some more Warhammer. Until then, everybody, take care. And goodbye for now.